the variety program has a special Tuesday offering <laughs> for you today. Will you do anything in defense of your country? Would you shoot a puppy? You know, there's one person who has already made it known. I'd shoot the dog. Yeah, should, should the <laughs> Every Trump statement is very interesting because there's always a subtext. And so the subtext there is loyalty. He can't really uh, walk as much anymore. He does goofy, crazy, scary things when he's in public. Less is more. That's a new, sharp approach. Yeah. All, is is all hide my, this guy because he's too old to be normal. All of my weaknesses are actually strength. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's in a job interview. It's a discipline. <laughs> you know what they're doing here, Josh? They're circumventing the traditional Beltway media filter <laughs> to, go directly, News. to go directly to the voters. <laughs> Any type of misery that the American people are, have inflicted upon them, there's a great chance there's a left-wing dark money group that's involved in it. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. <laughs> Just a catch of strays over here. <laughs> You're in for a hell of a show. Keep the faith, hold the line, and own the libs. It's time for our main Welcome back to a big Tuesday here on the Ruthless Variety program. Fellas, first off, uh, thank you for filling in. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great episode. You, you did great. Missed, but uh, we got the whole cast here. We're ready to rock. Yeah, I had a lot of travel well, last that's, week. That, that's yeah. not fun as it used to be. It's not as fun as it used to be, but I did make my way down to the Kentucky Derby. We'll talk a Ooh. little bit about that well, later nice. on in the program. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I thought really a top shelf deal you guys did yeah well i'm happy to work while you enjoy the derby you know? <laughs> <laughs> just outrageous well that's what he's known for folks is yeah. the work ethic yeah. and, and hard work a man showbiz he just <laughs> just puts his back to just about everything you know that's why it's just a pleasure to work with you <laughs> You know, if we have just one moment where we're just a little not feeling ourselves, we know we can turn and count on you. I'm happy to carry it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But it was a good episode. You got Hove Dion. That was good. Yeah. Good interview. Yeah. He's a great guy. The great mustache. Recruit. Yeah. I mean, it's just as great in person as it is on television. It's a formidable mustache. I think he's going to win. Do you? I really do. Yeah. I mean, that's a good thing for Wisconsin. Get some like actual leadership in there and win the state. I mean, Wisconsin is critical. I'd like to see. I'd like to see more Oppo on Tammy Baldwin. Frankly, mm -hmm. this is a this is a left wing lunatic. Yeah, Doesn't representing have any a swing in state, and uh, yeah, hopefully well, he can get that done. I think the Oppo exists. I really do. I would. I would uh, not question your authority on any of that. Uh, we should probably move on before we start breaking news <laughs> on any of it. Uh, listen, I want to start with Biden. Yeah, you know, we switch the format a little bit. He likes the meat. Yeah, but we, I, we we don't love the meat, but we like to just sort of do whatever. Yeah, we like our dessert first. Sometimes. We like dessert first, and I think what we've got here. <laughs> I mean, this is just like <laughs> we should just have the segment Biden watch. <laughs> Like, we, we, we should get, like, a medical professional to be like, no, that's not okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll just, we'll call it hospice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, this truly is, it has to be seen to be believed. Let's go to clip one, uh, Spaghetti, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> so, they're screaming questions at him. He turns around, blankly stares at him, and then does a squat. Yeah. Uh, and his doctor, the notable Mayo Clinic trained Dr. Joe <coughs> Biden, yeah. is like, this is so bad, I'm just going to walk. Like, how how many, it's like, if that Weekend at Bernie's is fun for, like, the, the two-hour movie, but if that's every day of your life, eventually you're like, I'm just walking, dude. I'm done with this game. <laughs> I can't be a part yeah. of all that. That, that. that squat and stare is the exact same thing my two-year-old does while he's shitting his pants. <laughs> 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 And you know I wouldn't put that past this president. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't bet against it. You wouldn't no. put heavy money against it. Like, there's clearly there's odds on it. It's not like you know. Doctor Jill told you that depends on that day. Should have listened. I know? mean, it's listen a, to the good doctor. It's at least a four to one prospect. <laughs> yeah. That what hap what's happening there I mean, is some kind of a bowel it's movement. It's a tough, tough. Ball. <laughs> do you think? Do you think it's a situation like when he's traveling, that you you can't just use. Like a, a little mover, you know, you gotta, you like, you gotta get on the overnights. Oh, 
like a you need like a heftier diaper situation with a trusted elastic around well, the leg. I don't yeah. think they move him around without easy access to a commode. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all know what happened in Europe. Many people are saying he pooped. Many are many people have said that that is what happened and now like you kind of see you, maybe You know that. actually I had a former boss uh, when I was appointed to the Board of Elections, who was the... Which is amazing in and of itself. Yeah. Well, I mean, they wanted the best. <laughs> so, uh, he was, so he was a Republican, right? But when he was like a young kid, somehow through a connection, he got a job being the like advance slash body guy for Jimmy Carter, right? And he was like, the most important job they told me is every place we have an event, every restaurant we visit, wherever we are, shaking hands or whatever, we need a way that if need be... You can be able to get the president, first lady, you know, whoever the principal is, to a restroom in, like, one minute. But that's, like, that is a standard rule. That's a standard rule. And, like, I hope his folks are following that. Yeah. No. They have uh, an express. Not great advance work, I guess. There is an additional component <laughs> yeah. that's, like, an express lane component <laughs> when it comes to this dude. It, it may be They're like, new... it needs to ha- be a bathroom with a diaper changing station. <laughs> <laughs> laying them up, laying them up on the plastic Dr. thing. Dr. Jill can operate. He's the family, the family bathroom. You need that. <laughs> I like the ones in the airport. Yeah. It's like men, woman, family. Yeah. And it's the one banger that's just horrible. <laughs> Re- recently it's had got the e- Biden table. Re- <laughs> recently- <laughs> It's a, they're like it's funny how we all these airports have installed full size adult yeah. tables. Yeah, no, yeah. it's like it's like a, a gurney. A gurney comes down from the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God bless it. Uh, disposable depends. Interesting. Um, all right, so we're gonna get to a bunch of stuff here on Ruthless. We got some Veep Steak stuff, and this has gotten more interesting over the last few days. There's a lot yeah. of news on it. We're going to give you our thoughts yep. uh, on what is a hilarious only Trump can do type process. Uh, we've got from a conspiracy theory to a hard fact in the blink of an eye, the mainstream media is now reporting on what we've talked about for the last, I would say, since um, at least December, that dark money is funding Palestinian protests. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally... Uh, Mainstream media got him bored with this. It's like it's wild. We've shamed them into it. If mm-hmm. only someone had been boring them for years. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. There might even be foreign components to it. Who knows? Who knows? And then we got some variety. You know, we'll talk a little Churchill Downs. We'll talk. Uh, there's some other stuff in here that I think you're going to get a kick out. Oh, I'm just going to say one thing as a teaser: emotional support alligator. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> it's yes. going to be a good one. And that, I mean. Again, has to be seen to be believed <laughs> in many, many different ways. But let's get right into the VP stuff, right? I right mean, to it. Do you want to? Do you want to? Should we take a little break for the ads, or should we just get into it? I think let's take a little break. Let's tease everybody and say we're coming right back. All right. I've told you about my friends at Americans for Prosperity. You know, the ones who bought the Bidenomics.com website right from under Joe Biden's nose. They're the largest, most effective grassroots organization in the country. Following up on their Bidenomics coup, AFP is now launching a national Bidenomics tour to expose the weak Biden economy and hold the lawmakers who voted with Biden accountable. Americans will hear the facts and figures the mainstream media won't tell you about. How Joe Biden and his allies ignored warnings their policies would trigger runaway prices. How inflation is killing homeownership in the American dream and how workers keep falling behind. And if the Bidenomics.com website is anything to go by, you can be sure it will be a lot of fun, too. To check out when the AFP Bidenomics tour is coming to your area, go to Bidenomics.com. That's Bidenomics.com. All right. Uh, so here's, the, here's the, the thing. We've talked about on the program how nobody does this in a made-for-TV way like Donald Trump does, yes. where there's a lot of people who are pining to be a VP candidate, right? I mean, you're like in an express lane for a number two in the country type thing. And so many people will do just about anything to be in that conversation. And there are others who are just like you see as fits. Like they kind of believe in the same things as Trump believes. They Yeah, there's a, there's like a lot of theories to how you pick your vice president. It's like, you know, it might be, like you said, someone who agrees might have had the same idea, same platform, so it's like a fit there. Or, like, you know, there can be some kind of, like, science that you try putting to it where it's like, okay, well, 
this person's like a governor or senator from this state, and it's a critical swing state, so maybe they can help out there. So there's a lot of factors. A lot of factors. Plus, you get the Trump apprentice component that's yeah. laid over top of it. Which is so awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's now a, a, a TV game show. It's the best part of it. Yeah. Because you get that same sort of you can see into the eyes of the contestants, like what they're willing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And like that in and of itself in a public forum sort of self-eliminates yeah. in many ways. And like I don't know that all of them are in on the joke. So I, I don't want to jump into this too quickly. Um, <laughs> you got something. Though. Yeah. The, the, there was, what was the name of this movie? It, it came out a few years ago. It was like a, a James Bond kind of spoofy movie. It had a, a, like a young kid and they worked in this. Anyways, so with one part, like when they're testing, like are you willing to become a spy for the country? They were like assigned a little puppy to take care of, right? And so they mm. raised the puppy as part of their training. And then the last two, it's like how committed you are to the job. And they hand them a gun. They're like, shoot the puppy, right? Well, I know one candidate. So there's, would be if, very if you're willing to do it, you are real. You are like 100% down for the cause. <laughs> you know, that's what that shows. Uh, but, but the, I, <laughs> I've not I, seen I, that. God I bless it. I don't think our president, Donald Trump, is asking anybody to shoot a puppy. In fact. <laughs> but you have to show your willing. Fact, you never know. I, if you I, know I, look, somebody's done it. If I see that I on the resume. One of them has done it. I, like, you know, they're like, will you do anything in defense of your country? Would you shoot a puppy? You know, there's one person who has already made it known. I'd shoot the dog. Yeah, should, should, <laughs> should, should we just get into yeah. Christy Nome at the top of this? I, before She's we get be into of all it. of this, because look, Axios did a really, really good job of breaking down an event that was held at Mar-a-Lago and what Trump has actually said about each of these candidates that we want to get into. But since we've previewed it with the puppy stuff, I think you're right, Michael. Yeah. I think there's just no other choice. Uh, King, Kingsman right. was the name of the movie. No one saw Kingsman. Kingsman. Okay, Great movie. I did not see that. Highly recommend it. Great scene. And 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 it goes right into Christy Nome. She has shown she's ready for the job, <laughs> no matter what is asked of her. And then like I wanted to get into this because the whole discussion I love around the tangent. What, that I mean, like, what she's you know what she's being put through for making the right call shows leadership. <laughs> okay. well, well, hold on. Hold, hold on. So for hold those on. of you, yes. let's, let's. for those of you unaware of this news, and if you don't eat, sleep, and breathe politics, but you just get it from the Ruthless Variety program, first of all, hats off. Yeah, yeah. I commend you. Only trusted source. I, I commend you. But what happened is Christy Nome, the governor of South Dakota, who's long been rumored as a potential running mate of Donald Trump, uh, released a book. It's not going perfectly. Phyllis. Well, in some in, in some people's opinion. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, we can all have <laughs> virgin minds yeah. on, on all of it. But uh, what happened was immediately there were some excerpts and some things released, pre-release. And the way this works, for those of you who've never been a part of the book publishing process, is people release uh, excerpts they do the publishers promote these things and then they put the authors on a book tour when you see a candidate or a politician on your tv on all the channels that you normally don't see them uh all the time they've got a book going because mm -hmm. they're so somewhat contractually obligated to go out and try to promote this book beyond like core audiences mm -hmm. And so they just keep going out, which in some cases uh, sells a lot of books. Uh, in other cases, brings a lot of pain. And in the case of Christy Nome, the first thing that came out was that she, her daughter, had a puppy uh, for the family dog that was... Uh, it was a bad dog. Well, it was bred to, to hunt, and it wasn't great at hunting. Yeah, it was a bad dog. And... Uh, she talks about in the book how she uh, brought it to a gravel pit. Yeah, that's where you do it. And shot the puppy. You do it. <laughs> that's and so. This is the thing. It's like okay, let's say you made a mistake. You bought something cheap off Amazon. It oh. falls apart. It didn't do its job, right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna throw it away. Okay. Everybody understands that, right? So like, if, if you if you if you buy something and it doesn't work, you throw it away. It's not like they got the puppy receipt. And here's the other thing is. <laughs> I am so sick of it. it's the millennials who did this shit, like this. Oh, pupper doggo! I'm, I'm <laughs> pupper a that's doggo. my that's my fur baby. That's not your fur baby. That's a dog. Your parents are mad you didn't give them real grandchildren. You know what I mean? Like it's a dog. It's a dog. You know, like you hunt deer, right? Uh, dogs, you know, especially pit bulls. They attack so many kids every year. 
So this is not like some kind of like a special connection to humanity type this of was, situation. This, this is another animal. You'll, not a pit bull. You know, if you're on the farm, yeah, not a you'll, you'll get rid of the you'll get rid of the chickens. You know, the cows, whatever. But now the dog gets some kind of like carte blanche if yeah, but, it's not doing his job. Yeah, pull your waiter, you're gone. But you're you're killing the chicken. You're killing the cows. For Kill food. the dog. Kill the dog. You don't have for to food. eat it. You this have to just eat goes it. in the gravel pit. Yeah, this just goes in the gravel pit. And I under, I understand if like the dog is totally untrainable and dangerous. Like why. You wouldn't want it on your property, but like deciding yourself to kill the yes, dog it's the is right like move. is like next level. It's, here's the thing: is in, with it, a puppy, in yeah. every a puppy. in every town across in every state in this country, there's a pound full of dogs. It's because we've got a problem. It's because no one's willing to make the right call. It's like if we've got <laughs> and you know so no many one. of these damn things all over the country that nobody wants. Well, you know, for about fifty cents, you can solve the problem. For just, just one brass round just and it's a done deal. Just 50 cents a day. Yeah, just 50 cents a day. We can know. help fight back. What, what round does that cost 50 cents? <laughs> Ammo's expensive in this country. Well, you, can, you, you can make it yourself, okay? Okay. You, for 50 cents, you can make yourself a round on the farm. You can get rid of the dog that's doing a bad job. It's that simple. And here's 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 the third part of this. <laughs> oh, my is, God. You know we're letting in illegal dogs, like, at the border? Like, those dogs, <laughs> like, there was some, like, charitable group that's, like... Where did this come from? Illegal dogs? Yeah. <laughs> it, some charitable groups, like, oh, you amazing. know, dogs that have crossed with migrants, we now have, like, in shelters, and you can adopt them. It's, like, are you serious, dude? Like, we're now... Taxpayer money is going not only to house <laughs> illegals and hand them visa cards, but even the dogs. We, we have we have Americans starving this country. We are off the rails. We're, we're all mad about dogs. We're all mad about dogs. I've got nothing. It's a worthless animal. I don't know. How, would you, would you know. like to hear what President Trump said about Christy? No, Nellie not yet. Not cops? yet. <laughs> not yet. We're going to get into all that. I want it to be in context, and she can lead the way if you'd like. But I want it to be in context because I want everyone to see what happened when Christy Nome tried to promote the book, and she went on CBS's Face the Nation, clip two spaghetti. But uh, on, the, on, on this point, though, because you have been rumored to be a potential vice presidential candidate, as you know, um, and former House Speaker Newt Gingrich said killing the dog and then writing about it ended any possibility of her being picked as VP. You talk multiple times about it. In fact, at the end of the book, you say the very first thing you would do if you got to the White House that was different from Joe Biden is you'd make sure Joe Biden's dog was nowhere on the grounds. Commander, say hello to Cricket. It, are you doing this to, try to look tough? Do you still think that you have a shot at being a VP? Well, number one, Joe Biden's dog has attacked 24 <laughs> Secret Service yes. people. So how many people is enough people to be attacked and dangerously hurt before you make a decision on a dog? And well, what he's to not do with living it? at the White that's, House That's anymore. the question that the president should be held accountable Leadership. to. Leadership. You're it. saying he should be that's shot? That's what the president should be accountable to. Is what is, what is the number? That's right. <laughs> this Bro, is, this that is, a, is so. That's the right right way. So so many conservatives are scared of fighting, and she's like, "I didn't just shoot my dog. I'd shoot Biden's too." She has gone out of her way to emphasize that she doesn't pass her responsibilities on no. other people. That's no, she'll go, she'll shoot anybody's dog. Yeah, like that's the thing is she makes the tough calls. You know, this dog is jumping around, biting people nonstop, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's just Commander being Commander." And the best is she should have dropped like a hotline when when the anchor was like. You know, he's on the White House grounds. He should be, he should be in the ground. You know, <laughs> such an opportunity to go hard. But at least, unlike most conservatives, she said the right unlike thing. She, you know, she was tough. Most, she I, was I, being tough. I, I love that whether you'd shoot the puppy has now become the conservative litmus test. Dude, yeah. <laughs> the, best, the best part is, is like how mm, I'm trying to become vice president. I'd like to do a nationally renowned show of which I don't normally do. And I'd like to get my millions of years on this. And she managed to turn a policy discussion into whose puppy would she shoot? Yeah. yeah. But you know what? What though? an amazing, what an amazing. And it doesn't end her White House chances, dude. Obama ate a dog, right? <laughs> he like did? He, went, he took the next step. Yeah, he, he wrote in his first book uh, that when he was in Indonesia or something, he ate a dog. Yeah, well, remember that was dogs. the pushback on Romney strapping the dog oh, to the yeah, roof? Oh, right. yeah, Long history of dog abuse yeah, at what the top is with of the ticket. That? Yeah, it's not abuse. <laughs> Listen, Obama ate the thing. I mean, I think she's basically banking on the media phenomenon of the Trump era, and that is there's no such thing as negative press. And that, like, if you are the center of attention, regardless of what people are saying about you, 
it's it works to your benefit to get that attention. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I don't support what Smug is saying. About, <laughs> I want to be clear. About the, dog, about the dog murder, but as far as like, and that's that murder. It's not murder. Okay, killing a chicken's a murder. Why is killing a chicken murder? It's not. Oh. You're just killing, killing animals, dude. You have dominion <laughs> over them. They're our property. I know. I, it's but the she, same thing as throwing away trash. It's man's throw best it friend. It is man's See, that's best the thing. friend. That's some like sentimental lib bullshit. She didn't eat it. It's Obama a, ate it. Obama and ate Obama it. didn't get nearly the negative press <laughs> nope. that she's getting. Nope. That's bias in the media. That is. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't, he didn't, right. he didn't shoot the right. thing and fry it up. Yeah. Like that. You see, How do you, you know? see, listener... <laughs> This is the dilemma <laughs> when you have an animal fighting podcast entering into political discussion. Uh, lines get very murky around here. Well, I mean, bottom line, she made the right move. If, if the, it was a bad dog, you got rid of it. You did the job instead of throwing it on taxpayers. Here's another dog in a shelter. It's going to sit there for five years. No one wants it. Get rid of it. OK, Solve let's let's move on from the dog, because that wasn't the only thing in the promotion of this book. I love kinda... it. I love that you're, you're being the responsible one. I'm trying talking. to be. I'm yes. really trying to be. Because we have so much other stuff to talk about in this VP stakes, and we've talked about the dog for 15 minutes. It deserves the time. Okay. It deserves but, the time. But this is this is a good point. Yeah. This is a good point. Because the book itself then sort of becomes a story. Right. And people are like, all right, what, what else is in this book? Which you could argue might be good for sales of this book or even promotion as vice presidential candidate. Uh, then she gets pressed on this issue where she discusses in the book uh, meeting... Kim Jong-un, yeah. the leader of North Korea. Can we play clip three, please? Talk about meeting some world leaders and one specific one. Quote, I remember when I met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I've been a children's pastor, after all. Did you meet Kim Jong-un? Well, you know, as soon as this was brought to my attention, um, I certainly uh, made some changes and looked at uh, this this passage. And I've met with many, many world leaders. Uh, I've traveled around the world. Uh, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, we went forward and have made some edits. So I'm glad that this book is being released in a couple of days and that those edits will be in place and that people will, will have the updated version. So you did not meet with Kim Jong-un. That's what you're saying. No, I've met with many, many world leaders, many world leaders. I've traveled around <laughs> the world. I think I've talked extensively in this book about Ugh, my time serving tough. in Congress, my time as governor, before governor, some of the <laughs> travels that I've had. Um, I'm not going to talk about my specific meetings with world leaders. I'm just not going to do that. No, uh, this discretion. anecdote shouldn't mm. have been in the book. And as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I made sure that that was adjusted. <sighs> so maybe it was like in secret and he shot the dog. And she's like having to take Maybe the, she had the North Koreans because, take out the dog? You know? Maybe she offered the dog as a gift. A <laughs> and there was like some kind of a weird uh, NDA about the dog shooting with yeah. Kim Jong-un? I don't know. I mean, she's not going to get into it's it. It's certainly not, possible. It, it requires discretion, that kind of thing. It's cert what would she be meeting with Kim Jong-un about? I mean, I know that South Dakota has its problems <laughs> with North Dakota. And maybe she's trying she's to like, like let's let's unite the north and the south of two different places. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> she's she, trying to get tips. <laughs> she's uncomfortable. So so Bergam's got you know a tough <laughs> thing going with the border. <laughs> this guy's my main competition for VP. How would you invade from the south? <laughs> how, do I, how do I string a DMZ across the border line? <laughs> Dude, it is just fantastic. But then I saw her out again yesterday. Do it like they have to keep putting her out. It's, it's. I assume it's contractual. I think you're right no. about the contract. Nothing else makes sense. It like you wouldn't do this to yourself. No. So then she goes back out on a whole bunch of shows that are like, uh, so did you did you meet with the guy? And like I didn't still really understand whether she met with. All I know is that her commitment is that that uh, particular thing was inaccurate. I will also say, just as a matter of writing, and I don't know who the ghostwriter is. She blamed wasn't, a lot of this on a Clearly ghost wasn't writer. her. <laughs> she blamed it on a ghost, which wasn't named. The ghostwriter was not named in the book. But she's since said the ghostwriter had this 
this particular issue. Bro, shout out to the Ghost Rider. Shout out to the It was like, <laughs> the ghost it was like late at night, and he's like, oh, man, I got to knock out like 60 pages by morning. Yeah, he's like, Turn this draft, and, and then I met with Kim Jong. <laughs> That's what the publisher's saying but it right made now. It, but it made it past him. <laughs> it made, she read the damn audio book. She yeah. read the audio book. And then she I read Kim that Jong-un. passage in the audio book. So good. But like all of this uh, comes up, and like she doesn't have an answer for it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Is that is that fit the criteria dunks that we're talking about with like all press is good press? Uh, I just checked. Uh, her book is is um, number six in oh. politics and so know, yeah on Amazon. There you go. So yeah, it does. And What's, like anybody, anybody that, else, like if Christy Nome publishes a biography outside of the people of South Dakota, like who's buying that? Right. But because she shoots dogs. And talks about uh, foreign leaders she never met with, or uh, maybe, or hold, could have. <laughs> hold, hold on, I, I, I'm, I'm actually really on Amazon right now. It's number one in elections, mm. number one in political commentary and opinion, and yeah, number one in the United States executive government. In what set categories? What's she that, knows how to sell. <clears throat> yeah. What's that book called, Michael? Um, what's the title of the that? The title book? of the book is "No Going Back." <laughs> <laughs> no going back. <laughs> well, that is the fact. <laughs> what was the name of that dog, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say this. Cricket. Cricket. <laughs> no going back for cricket. Meet cricket, she said. I mean, cricket just sounds helpless. Oh, God. Cricket, cricket well, sounds like a bad dog. Dude. Cricket didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> it was, it was, he had a rough hand of cards from the beginning. A real martyr of the dog kingdom. It's like when you march to the gravel pit, you got to know. He's like, oh, there's well, only one book person going back. <laughs> I, so I didn't read the book. Do you guys know the detail? Did she shoot and miss that fucker first? No. No, it was it was double barrel to the back of the skull, bro. What? Yeah. She just took it down. Yeah. Wait, two barrels? Because she, she also gone. She also killed Clean a goat. off, dude. What? Ten, what do you think a 10-gauge does are, to a puppy's head? Wait, are, are, are you think ten? It, she used a 10-gauge? Yeah, is, is this parody we're laughing? Or well, you, yeah, but I thought it was kind of fun. Wait, did you <laughs> read? Wait, you just wait, made did it you up? read that? <laughs> Listen, you can make You're shit up. You're making this up? The governor does. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god the variety the variety program has a special tuesday offering <laughs> for you today <laughs> all right so let's get back into what we were going to talk about because this, this is where it fits and we can we can start our view has always been that the best way to tell how Trump is positioning all of these people, like sometimes he's trying to goad people into things, try, but it's all kind of through the public medium. And so what he says in public matters mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Like it gets a good insight into it, what he's thinking. It does, because each one of these people who are trying to be the vice president are in a sense a salesman. You know, they are yeah. trying to put their best sales pitch to President Trump, who happens to be the greatest salesman in the history of the world. So his observations on what salesmen are doing to try to sell him, I think, are very interesting. Yeah. Should we start with no? So, so yeah, this is, this is out of an Axios article uh, where Trump's real-time reviews of the VP uh, candidates and other surrogates are happening, and they have quotes throughout. It's a good piece of reporting. Let's start with no. Okay, here's no. Somebody that I love, she's been with me, a supporter of mine, and I'm a supporter of hers for a very long time. Okay. Well, it sounds pretty warm. Mm-hmm. You recall that there was, during his presidency, uh, a trip to Mount Rushmore for the 4th of July. And it was a banger. Like, it was that a was banger. good advance work. Yeah. So, I mean, there, and then there was obviously the nexus there with Corey Lewandowski, yeah. which, uh, for the purposes of this program, we will leave specifically at that. And say that there was a team connection. I also, I also think one thing, real quick here. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore that, and say, <laughs> uh, say that like every Trump statement is very interesting because there's always a subtext, and so the subtext there is loyalty, right? Ah, yes, that's good insight. Mm. Yes, and, and I, I guarantee for every single one of these, he's gonna read that there is a clear subtext. Dude, Long is time yep. is an important part of that phrase. Right. right. Mm-hmm. So. Contrary to the Newt Gingrich quote and everybody's <laughs> belief, uh, she's still in the mix. Mm. Still in the mix. Mm-hmm. All right, what else do we got here? Okay, Marco Rubio. Oh, yeah, this is one that's just come up. It's a big fan favorite <laughs> of Comfortably Smug. <laughs> Has been for years. Long time. Yeah. Long time. What version of Ruby are we on now? Like nine? Nine point? Is this 9.0? <laughs> 
Here's what here's what President Trump said. His name is coming up a lot for vice president. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Little Marco, right? That was, so that's no, known as. But like, look at that. No commentary on him. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just the news reports about him. Mm. Right. See, that's tougher. It's a tougher thing, but I think what he's responding to is the number of articles that came out. First of all, there there is a nexus between Susie Wiles and Marco Rubio and the Florida politics Republican mm-hmm. piece. She's obviously a critical part of his campaign, trusts her a lot, and she's a very competent operator, but also she has a, a relationship, a good one, with Marco Rubio, and so there's been a lot of speculation. And then you saw... Somebody like Marco Rubio, who has had a international American supremacy view of foreign policy for a long time, been one of the more outspoken. He's been very, very similar to like a Tom Cotton yeah. over the years. I mean, you remember in 2016, his motto was a new American century. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't, but I'm glad to see his fans remember. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, but it's, continue. Dude, it's just, it's it's just for old. You're, if you're an old time listener of the Ruthless Ferrari program, you're getting what you want. You're very familiar with you're this. You're getting what you wanted out of this. Yeah. I'm trying to add value to the show, and Smug just slashes my tires. Well, you yeah. know what he's doing. I know. Yeah, I, will, I mean, but I will say that analysis you gave on on like the gnome statement of what that says is loyalty. Great read on that. Well, can I give my analysis on yes, this one? Yes. My analysis on this one is. Trump knows people are working it. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's, that's exactly a lot, of talk. a lot of other people are talking yep. about it. A lot of means, talk. Hey, I know there's there's people out there that are working oh, this. He knows. The point I was going to make is that his VP bubble kind of like began to inflate when he voted against Israel and Ukraine funding because mm-hmm. it's like entirely related to his global worldview as it has been expressed both in his own presidential campaign but over the course of his last, you know, 12, 14 years of federal service. Like, we know what the guy believes. And then this Do was, we? Well, this was disjointed from that. We don't. Okay. It's like someone tried more on everybody. But anyways. So, but, but that's that, what, where I think, that happened. I think Duncan's read on that is perfect. Because when he says his name's been getting mentioned a lot, it's not like Trump, who is the person making this decision, responsible for the consideration, has anything to say about that individual. Mm -hmm. His name's been out there a lot. Seems to me that's just saying like, well, you know, the Rubio press office has been doing a good job of of getting his name out there as a potential VP. Yeah. Like pick. Well, that's that's great analysis all around. How about Tim Scott? Would you like to hear what he said about Tim Scott? And now this might be the most favorable thing of the day. As a candidate, he did a good job. But as a surrogate, he's unbelievable. But, but That's what Trump said about Senator yeah. Tim Scott from Here's South my caveat on that. As a surrogate. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. As a surrogate. Yeah. Surrogate, by definition, is subordinate. Yep. And so is VP. Mm-hmm. So it couldn't, it's not disqualifying, but uh, gravitas means an awful lot to yep. him. And so I wonder if he's kind of getting the Chris Christie play of 2016. Where it's like, oh, I love what this guy has been able to do with certain places for me, but like I don't really see this. I, so I read, I read it a little bit differently. Oh, okay, I'd like to hear that. Uh, I I feel like Tim Scott sort of went out of his way during that primary to not offend Donald Trump. He did, well, no question. Which I, I found we actually, pushed him on it on <clears> the program. <throat> I mean, honestly, yeah. if they, if 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 they went through the tape of the program, they might have a little different view of. Yeah, I I don't know, but my take of it was is that Donald Trump probably appreciates that a ton from a guy like Tim Scott, obviously knowing like the lane he was trying to carve in that yep. Republican primary. And so I I don't see it as, I don't see the second part as a dig. Mm. I really don't. Okay. Mm. I really don't. Okay. Well, look, the guy can do a lot worse that, than Tim Scott as a VP candidate. That's my prediction eight months ago. Nationally known... He's he does a really really good job on the stump fundraising. He puts a lot of effort into getting out, getting everywhere. He's good at fundraising. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of stuff to like about that. And I think yeah, at some point he was kind of a consensus VP. But uh, I, I think uh, I think it's dismissive because he even on stage I'll never forget he said about Tim Scott, this guy worked harder campaigning for me than he did himself. You know, mm. and I think that says a lot. 
Okay. Okay. So what do we got for J.D. Vance? To you, actually, I'm going to skip ahead because to your point about Gravitas, there's another candidate whose name has emerged at the top in recent days, and that's Doug Burgum, mm-hmm. governor of North Carolina. Oh, yeah. North Dakota. North Dakota. I'm sorry, North Dakota. Gee whiz. How could Jeez. you get something like that? How dare he you? Was, uh, Trump says, he was a supporter of my two campaigns. He's a very rich man. <laughs> It's That's about what he as said about good it. a comment I love about it. a Donald Trump as you could ever have. <laughs> it's so awesome. A very rich man. Yeah. Like that's that's basically the coin of the realm for Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Isn't I mean, it? I mean, it, am I missing something on that? It, it, it's harder to think of a better thing yeah. that Trump could say about the only, you. The only thing better he could be like is like uh he builds buildings better than me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not ever gonna be said. <laughs> That's never, there's no person. Like the only thing that comes close to it is he's a very rich man. I, I think that's right. Right? I No, I think I think that's right. Well, and like, I mean, I, I don't think. I don't what think, an awesome quote. It's not super flattering. <laughs> Look, I, I don't think we've been been shy in uh, in Burgum being an amazing guy who didn't get his moment in the sun. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with like tearing your Achilles apart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's, yeah. but he's, he's still got, got on stage. I think, you know. He's got I, a lot of talent. It's yeah. media bias of like they don't give attention to states where they can't like take the sell it to pretty much yeah um he was a gr- excellent candidate insanely well qualified and i think that's pretty much the best compliment donald trump could give anybody yeah dude's and, loaded and as as charlie spearing uh, pointed out on monday on twitter he talked to us about how to kill animals indeed in in, in this case it was just a rattlesnake yeah mm-hmm. i mean a lariat to the that made uh, yeah, axios across. right yeah the, so you know there is that Pretty tough. If we're moving down the list here, you mentioned J.D. Vance, what Trump said about him. He wasn't a supporter of mine at the very beginning. He was saying things like, the guy's a total disaster. Anyways, I got to know him a little bit. (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) Doesn't sound like a yes. Yeah, but Trump gets over that stuff. He he does. Well, I mean, Mike Pence campaigned against Donald Trump in 2016 directly Mm -hmm. in the same window of time Mm -hmm. for Ted Cruz. So you're right. I mean, to your point, he got over that really quickly yeah. because it made sense for him. I mean, like the, the whole Little Marco beef is a perfect example. You know, like th- it was months after he start he, he bodies Little Marco, starts calling him <laughs> Little Marco. And then like when Rubio was like mad and he was like, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm not going to run again for Senate. And then Trump tweeted, you know, run, Little Marco, run. And then he decided to run again. So he gets over things quick. How about friend of the program, Wesley Hunt? Yeah. Okay, Trump yeah. said, another friend of mine makes the best commercials, beautiful family. That's a good mm. That's a good compliment. All true stuff. Mm. Because like t- the TV thing matters to, to Trump. He understands the importance of presentation. And so when he focuses on like, yeah, this guy's, a, you know, it's like a show horse. Mm-hmm. You know? But this is why I go back it. to the Tim Scott as a surrogate thing. That's mm-hmm. not what he says of Wesley Hunt. Mm. Like Wesley Hunt has been his surrogate. From the very beginning. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the first congressional endorsements. I think he may have been the first, right? Yeah, yeah. if not the first, one of the first. Yeah. And it, it's nowhere is like, I mean, it's about him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's not saying this guy's a good surrogate. He's like, yeah, this guy's showbiz. He's, he, he, he it's presents. interesting. I it don't know if that means anything, but it's interesting. Well, he was very effusive with Wesley Hunt, less so with Mike Lee, who he said, <laughs> I love your haircut. <laughs> For real? That's what he said. <laughs> he's bald, <laughs> no, right? I mean, he really said, <laughs> Didn't he shave his head? I think, yeah. <laughs> no, so, so he doesn't mean. have any hair? Pre- no, President a, Trump is observant. Sort of a buzz, buzz cut. He, I mean, yeah. Because it he's was losing going his hair. pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you know what? I, I respect that more than the people who, like, try to hang on to it. You like the full? I'm just saying if it's going. Oh, you okay. just take her down. Take her down. You think that's what President Trump was saying? No, no, I don't think he thought about <laughs> yeah, it that way Yeah, the courage to do all. the right thing. I think, I, I think it was one of those situations <laughs> where he was like, I need to think of something to say, and I'm just going to say this. Good haircut, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Good haircut, bro. Elise Stefanik is a, uh, a popular Republican in the House of Representatives. President Trump said, a very smart person. She was in upstate New York when I met her. Little did we realize she would be such a big factor. Mm, that's strong. Interesting. Well, that's... That's strong. That's strong. very strong. Yeah. Big factor mm-hmm. is something that's you got to keep your eye on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We got any others? Mike Walls. We've had him on the program, friend of the program, a man that knows more about the military. When I want to know about the military, I call him. Hey, you know what? It, that's a factual statement. Hmm. I mean, he's very, very adept. I mean, we've had him on the program twice, I think, and 
uh, I always come away with those interviews being like, oh man, I learned something here. And it's always on this set of issues. You know, whether that means VP or DOD or, it's hard to see that kind of praise for somebody like Mike Waltz where you're not thinking of him playing a uh. role of some kind, which keep an eye on that. One other guy, just before we turn the subject, Byron Donalds, somebody who's created something very special politically. I like diversity, Trump says. <laughs> diversity, as you would say. I like diversity with the, with the affectation there on the E. Uh, donors worth millions of dollars all want a piece of Byron. <laughs> I, 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 that seems like a ringing endorsement of Byron Donald. The guy, the guy is a lot of talent. I yeah. love commentator Trump. You know, it I is, love. It yeah, I love when he breaks that fourth wall and he's like, "I'm your friend on the couch. This is my. This is how I yep. see this person." If if I had a, a, a genie, man, that'd be one of the wishes. Is like, I just want to watch TV for an hour with Trump and just hear his thoughts because yep. he does the best. It's just like hanging out with a buddy. So. After all this, you read all this, like, what are your thoughts? Let's start with you, Ashbrook. Like, who's going to get it? I, I'm going to stick with the people who I thought had the best shot at the beginning. You're going to list them all, and then you're going to take them all from us? I, and yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to just... say, say two names. Well, so you take two of them. Tim Scott and Doug Burgum. The two names well, who I thought I, from like the beginning. Just, like, this is well, a classic. Well, here we this go. Is you, a class. you, asked, you asked me who I think, and you can say the same thing. It's okay. Because you've learned I'm, so I'm much from the journals, man. You never get pinned down. I'm just going to say, take a stand. I'm gonna say those, those are two guys who <laughs> those are two guys who could step in and be president on day one. I have an you know idea of like? who you might say, and I'm going to list them all. <laughs> yeah. Here's my thoughts. My list of seven. <laughs> <laughs> you, you asked me, and I said two. <laughs> You go ahead and say that uh, three I through seven. I tried to stop you, in fairness, from saying two, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, do you want to say Burger or Scott? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it ultimately comes down to what is Trump trying to solve for, mm. right? Like, I, I, in in sixteen, there was concern off like the right side of the map with evangelical voters and yes. stuff being uncomfortable with, you know, an, a New York billionaire who used to be a democrat mm -hmm. he doesn't have that problem anymore right you know and there's no need to <clears throat> reinforce conservative bona fides he's already romped through a he primary did it. he did it he put yeah. you know three conservative justices on, on the united states supreme right. court like that that bill's been paid um so i don't know if that makes tim scott less likely um because I think he does fulfill a lot of that on the evangelical side of the Republican primary universe. Um, he's also a black man, you know, which is a constituency we're seeing, especially with younger black men gravitating towards the Republican Party, at least in these initial polls. And I know we all think the political gravity is going to come back to, to earth on a lot of that stuff, and it's ultimately not going to end up where it is currently. But if it's an open opportunity, do you exploit that opportunity and put, you know, Afri African American man uh on the ticket uh he also presents well and he yeah i mean he he, he there's not an <clears throat> issue you're gonna wrap him around the axle on no um and uh Who, tim scott yeah and 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 like dude can raise a lot of money and i understand doug burgum is 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 worth a lot of money and i think doug burgum would make a great vp or a great president someday so that's not a shot against against him but i still think uh tim scott's probably the most likely okay smug um, no, I would I would love to see uh, him pick Doug Burgum. He got a strong endorsement. I, however, think hearing from those, it sounds like JD Vance is in a stronger position than I estimated, and I think he would add a ton to the ticket. I would pay top dollar to see a JD Vance Kamala Harris debate because oh, he that would, would be so shred good. her. Yeah, that would be really good. Are you being paid top dollar? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and, and, and you know what? When you bring that up, maybe I don't support any of these people. <laughs> Jeff Gass, if you're listening, Jeff Gass, tell me who to pick, bro. <laughs> so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious there, Smug. What is it that you think JD would bring? To, like, and maybe this doesn't sure. matter. Maybe, yep. maybe, maybe this doesn't matter. And like. I think, you know, everybody... We always overestimate. Yeah, we always overestimate yeah, this yeah. stuff. Especially like, with Trump, who's, like, ubiquitous. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. The idea of a subterranean, like, I don't know what Trump's going to bring, but let me yeah. hear from the VP. Somebody else. That vote has got to be just a <clears throat> really minute. Yeah, so, so 
Um, is that is that necessary? Like, do you think JD has to add some other thing? Or I, I think something that he brings to the table that would get super apparent is he's a young guy. Yeah. And and this is a, there is a that. lot of people have been complaining. I don't want to vote for someone old. You've got a young guy now on the ticket. You know, Kamala's what sixty something, but she's also, currently the youngest person. Like in, in in the executive, mm -hmm. uh, when when it comes down to Trump, aren't we working Biden with Kamala, all young? Like, I mean, there's nobody here who qualifies JD's for social the, security. JD's, JD's the youngest among them. No question, but I mean, so so I think that adds a lot, and I think it would be way more apparent out there on the campaign trail of like you'd have Biden and Kamala shambling around, mm -hmm. and then JD Vance barnstorming while Trump's also barnstorming. That would be strong because because Trump's a guy who will do. I mean, in, in 2016, he was doing seven, eight rallies he was flying to in a day, and then they had Hillary at two stops. Like, I think J.D. Vance could match him for that energy. No, I, I think J.D. would be fantastic, but I'm a homer because he's from my part of Ohio. Hmm. Well, I, look, I, I, I think Bergam makes too much sense. Yeah, I mean, he's the perfect pick. Right? I mean, if, I, if I'm just looking at this through the lens that I've looked at politics for 20 years trying to put these things together, it makes too much sense because you got a guy from the middle of the country, a self-made person, brought thousands of jobs to a state like North Dakota, has good relationships, he's worth a lot of money. Uh, he's also just inherently inoffensive to a whole segment of the electorate that you ultimately need in the end. Extremely honest, hardworking. Like, he has it all. Like if I look at that, he, it makes too much sense to me. And every time something makes too much sense, I have to go looking for something else. And, and like you know? it matters to Trump the looks thing. The guy's like out of central casting oh, for president. Like he could play president in a movie. How about the head of hair? That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. exactly like what you think you know executive should look like. Yeah. So I start looking around. I mean, the least Stefanik thing is interesting to me mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, just because obviously they're going to have a problem with women. The, the vote the gap in all polling between men and women is still significant and maybe growing. Um, that's going to be a problem in the end. So I'd like to look at somebody like that. I'm, I'm not sure Christy Noem gets that done because her, like her appeal, even if you take like the smug approach <laughs> to like, she did the right thing with shooting the puppy, like her appeal is all the dudes. Mm -hmm. It's just the dudes. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of women who are like, yeah, she's me. Mm-hmm. Just, just not, you know. Yeah, not a lot of right. women who've met Kim Jong Un and shot a dog. Yeah, I mean, allegedly. Yeah, maybe he looks on nice. the uh, oon, not on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I love Wesley Hunt. I, the thing I get with like the Marco and Wesley Hunt thing is like both of these guys are stars. Mm -hmm in their own right, in that they have the capability of taking over a media spotlight at some level. And like, I'm not sure that Trump's in love with that. I think he would be so happy to have Wesley Hunt a part of what he does. And they would be close no matter what. Mm -hmm. But like the idea of that, of having that guy open up the stage for Donald Trump, like you run the risk of being overshadowed. That dude, I mean, he is a engine. Mm -hmm. He is an engine. I mean, you hear him out when he does his, his thing here on the program. The guys, he can get them going. Right. Yeah. No, he's very And like very the idea good. that you got to follow that act every time, uh, it ain't Mike Pence, mm -hmm. which is for four years up until election 2020, kind of what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. Somebody who just like gave you the, the credibility, followed your administration, supported you unwaveringly, and all those things. Yeah. But the one, one thing I would say on that is like, <clears throat> You can plan for that. You can schedule for that. Like, back to uh, Smug's point on J.D. Vance, like, dude, I think Wesley Hunt could carry an event himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But but when you're the nominee, you can do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just by virtue of the title, you can carry events by yourself. No, I know. But what I'm saying is, like, you could do a Wesley Hunt event in an urban area in Georgia. You could, and, like, Trump wouldn't have to be there. Yeah. And, like, Wesley Hunt could get that done. Yeah. You know what I mean? I also think you just run risks when you're doing house. <laughs> oh, well, that's just your bias. <laughs> I just do. I love Wesley guy. like he's a brother. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, I mean that for real. Like, you need to go, you need to have a statewide experience to get on the top of the ticket. 
can I? At some level. There, How dare you? There is, I, I just believe that. Fellas, there is one name that was not listed here in this Axios article. Comfortably and, smug. And I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering if you think that uh, Nikki Haley is just, that ship has sailed. Well, DeSantis isn't on there either, and they just had a meeting down in Mar-a-Lago that right. all, from all reports went fairly well. They both represent segments of the electorate that were inaccessible to Trump during a primary. And the question is what you get. Like the Nikki Haley thing is interesting because it actually is an evident general election problem. She became a receptacle of the anxiety of a Republican Party that's sort of pre-2016 on following the Republican Party to 2024. Mm. And there's no question that she represents that at this point. But, like, to your point that you made, Michael, I mean, the man loves loyalty. Yeah. He loves it. Yeah. And, and with Ron DeSantis, I mean, he's the current governor of Florida. So unless Donald he Trump can't is— can't go anywhere. Like, unless Donald Trump is going to be like, I live in Bedminster now, like— Yeah, he can't go anywhere. It ain't going to happen. And he's not moving. No. 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 All right. So I have pretty much—what we would like to know, and this is the audience interaction component— Comment both on where you get your podcast if you're audio only and if you're a YouTube subscriber in the in the YouTube section, let us know who you like. Because I think that helps inform us yeah. on where you all are at and what you think adds to the ticket. We'll take some of that and we'll infuse it into what we're doing. Obviously it's gonna be a huge story from now until the convention. So we're gonna do a That's lot a of That's a good question. Stuff. I, I wanna know. Yeah. yeah. So get in. Let's let's hear about it because there's no better way than to reach out into the field and figure out what everybody's thought process is well beyond the confines of organized politics. Should we talk about the other side of the coin real quick? Sure. Biden. Hmm. We're going to go through this quick. We talked a lot about how they were basically going to do a 2.0 version of hiding him in the basement. Yep. Uh, there was an NBC News article that came out where they basically confirmed all of that. Of course. Right? As, pre as um, I'm quoting from them. As President Joe Biden ramps up his reelection effort, his campaign is also scaling back on how much he says on the trail. Part of a larger new strategy to hone a sharper message he'll take into the general election. Of course, I mean, this is the best, like, new and sharper. Classic. Like, new and sharper are words that you don't use in without quotes. And yep. it's right there without quotes. <laughs> uh, the, you know what they're doing here? Josh, they're circumventing the traditional Beltway media filter <laughs> to, go directly, to go directly to the voters. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Uh, Just bullshit. Listen to this next one. The less is more approach. Ah, oh, less is more. Mm, oh. How could you do less? But the less is more approach aims for quality over quantity. Interesting. Uh, when it comes to the president's public appearances, aid say. Aid say. Um, maybe, maybe because more, more has been a catastrophic disaster. Yeah. I mean, I, like it's not cognitive decline. It's uh, less is more. <laughs> less is more. I mean, like this is just such absurdity to see the media just try to pair it out and defend Joe Biden being like, you know, he can't really, uh, walk as much anymore. He does goofy, crazy, scary things when he's in public Less is more. That's a new, sharp approach. Yeah. All, is is all hide my, this guy because he's too old to be normal. All of my weaknesses are actually strength. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's in a job interview. It's a discipline. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but so our, our old boy, remember Ducklow? Yeah. Oh, he's He might have been one of our back? first scalps. Yeah. Ducklow is back. He's, he's a spokesperson on the uh, campaign now. Uh, here's his quote. There's a strategic advantage at this point in the race to boiling down your message to three or four of the most salient, compelling arguments for why President Biden should be reelected. Re um, this will often translate to the stump being whittled, stump speech, he's talking about like what you do on the campaign trail, to the stump being whittled down to its sharpest most dynamic form. Mm. That's a, so they're like, they're, it's like, again, God. just like Duncan said, ah, is trying, <laughs> is trying to make your weaknesses train. So they're like, he can stand for maybe 60 to 90 seconds. Yeah. But this is just because we want to make the message super sharp and salient. Like, they're going to be like, we have three sentences that he reads, including the one at the end that says applause. 
four more years. I mean, this is so good. <laughs> Sharpest and most dynamic. This is so good to me for so many reasons. And for those of you who are out in the country and like don't do this for a living, like bear with me for a minute. But for those of you who are in like Capitol Hill offices or campaign offices, you'll appreciate this so much. Imagine pissing it like you're you're pitching a story that is a essentially a reboot story without calling it a reboot story mm. in May of the election year about your strategy for utilizing an incumbent president that is quite obvious to everyone in the American public incapable of doing anything dynamic mm -hmm. or anything that is engaging at a real public level, right? Well, buddy, it's not... And it's like, oh, well, this is new. It's new. It, first of all, it's new and dynamic. It's not only obvious to the American people. Let me read you an important juxtaposition that came out right after NBC in the Wall Street Journal. Quote, senior Biden aides are doing everything in their power to Trump proof as many regulations as they can before they become vulnerable to being overturned. Oh. So the Biden White House doesn't even believe that bullshit. They don't even. They're the trying, policy they're trying guys to are like, damn. how do we rat fuck as many American businesses as we can because we might be out of work here? We know we're not going to win re-election. <laughs> that's brutal. We don't believe TJ Duckalo. <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> but Johnny, it's, it's, it's strategic and it's uh, sharp and dynamic. And you know, I, yeah. I, I can break it down in a way that even if you're not a, a political professional, if you're selling a product that you believe in, that you're like, oh, man, people are going to want to buy this, is your strategy really, but you're not going to be able to see it? Like, mm -hmm. you know, let's say you're at the grocery store and they've got some item that you can have on the little toothpick. Be like, oh, but you can't have the toothpick, you know. It's, it's sharp and dynamic. I'm just telling you it's good, but you can't see it. <laughs> Are you going to trust it? I'm going to be like, no, I don't want it, dude. It's like a, I don't know what it is. You can't even show me what it is. I'm not buying that. It's like a crypto is, bitch. It's like a classic thing in politics. And we, <laughs> we've, like we've talked about this a lot on the show, but like whenever there is a problem with reality of like what the American people think of what you've done or it's accomplished, it's always a messaging problem, yeah. right? Like all we got to do is we got to tighten it up, and like yeah. a couple of points in the stump and all that sort of thing. I mean, like that obviously isn't reality. Reality is the American people think the economy is much worse. Two thirds of Americans believe the Trump economy was better than the Biden economy. Yeah. And they haven't for a second, for a second, made a logical argument for that's why right. that's not the case. And that is ultimately their problem. None of this fucking matters. None of this matters what they're saying in this article. And they're going to write dozens and dozens more about how they're going to sharpen the message and all of these things. The one thing I would say, though, that Joe Biden has going for him right now, three times as much money as Trump raised last FEC period. Ooh. Yeah. Eight times, eight times as much cash, like on air, like on, on spending, yep. and a two time cash on hand advantage. Mm. And like, look, uh, uh, that was March. That was the March reporting period. And that was during the primary. And I expect Donald Trump is going to raise a shit ton more money in this next reporting period. But like, if you do not close that gap, that is the only way Joe Biden can change the opinion and the electorate of those things like the economy. Mm. You don't think shorter, crisper remarks? No, nope, doesn't do. fucking matter. He can't fucking deliver them. It's just going to have to be cash on the air. <laughs> That's right, dude. That's it's, the truth. But it's part of a broader strategy. <laughs> it's part of a broader strategy, as they've articulated here at the NBC. I don't know why we're not paying more attention to this yeah. uh, Pulitzer or the yeah. submission. Okay. Uh, so let's get to the thing we've been talking about a lot. It's the protesters that you're seeing out on all these college campuses. And like well, we, from the very beginning, have told you far before these protests actually happen that there are organized efforts off the left, largely Soros funded. They started with like basically making sure the prosecutors don't prosecute crime. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've moved on into funding efforts to break the law in jurisdictions, by the way, that they funded the prosecutors uh, to not enforce the law. So yeah. like everybody's in good hands here. Um, but particularly as it deals with pro-Palestinian stuff on these college campuses, I think we bullied basically the mainstream media into actually writing it. Yeah, thank Do God. Doesn't it seem like it? And I know this is this issue is near and dear to your heart, yeah. Smug, because you've been dealing with it in a variety of different ways, judicial and everything else. But this one is actually quite amazing because Politico ignores a lot of that stuff, as does all of the mainstream outlets, but they didn't hear. Um, and they said President Joe Biden has been dogged for months by pro-Palestinian demonstrators calling him genocide Joe. But some of the groups behind the demonstrations received financial backing from philanthropists pushing hard for his own reelection. 
The donors include some of the biggest names in Democratic circles, Gates, Soros, Rockefeller, and Pritzker, according to Politico Analysis. Two of the main organizers behind the protests at Columbia, and we all saw that shit show, uh, on other cam- and on other campuses are Jewish Voice for Peace and If Not Now. Both are supported by the Tides Foundation, yep. which is seeded by Democratic mega donor George Soros, as well as Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It's more like a Melinda Gates thing at this point, isn't it? Do they still have the joint foundation? I don't know. She, she does a lot of philanthropic work on her own, and uh, for many reasons, lots of people are trying to be less associated with Bill Gates these days. It, for many reasons we won't go into for fear of litigation. <laughs> uh, they, they both declined to comment on this story, <laughs> of course. Uh, I might add. But another notable Democratic donor whose philanthropy has helped protest movement is David Rockefeller Jr., who sits on the board of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund in 2022, gave $300,000 to the Tides Foundation. According to nonprofit tax forms, Tides has given nearly $500,000 over the past five years to Jewish Voice for Peace, which explicitly describes itself as anti Zionist. So this is when I saw this article, and and you you brought it up that even before this protest, we had been warning people about left wing dark money. And so I saw this article where uh, it said uh, pro Palestinian protesters are backed by a surprising source, Biden's biggest donors. We've been talking about how the Biden White House is run by left wing dark money. Jen Psaki worked for a left wing dark money group. Uh, one of the top comms people on the Biden campaign, Brian Fallon. Works for a group, a left-wing dark money group that wants to pack the court. This administration is bought and paid for by left-wing dark money groups. These groups, I started following this. So what it did it for me was the prosecutor thing. Summer of 2020, yep. I'm watching my country being set on fire. And none of these people are arrested. None of them are prosecuted. In New York State, they offered a blanket pardon to everyone who was burning down buildings, uh, rioting and looting uh, in that summer of 2020. And how is this possible? I, 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 I couldn't understand it. And that's when I start doing the research and start learning, oh, well, these left-wing dark money groups just bought up all these prosecutors across the country, legalized crime, and that's just like their opening shot. Like, mm-hmm. now you see this. They're funding these movements on campus. I've made, like, I, I say the line, any type of misery that the American people are, have inflicted upon them, there's a great chance there's a left-wing dark money group that's involved in it, whether it's the Tides Foundation, whether it's Arabella Advisors. These groups specialize in getting money from these billionaires, some of them overseas, as you'd mentioned, Hans Jörg Wies in Switzerland. Not even an American citizen Mm -hmm. pours hundreds of millions of dollars into these left-wing causes in America, backs Joe Biden with it. Like, this is a significant problem, and I'm so proud of the work we've done exposing this and telling people, hey, these left-wing dark money groups are a huge problem. And when I shot this story out, when I tweeted it, I was like, wow, has anyone been warning y'all? Yeah. I was so happy. So many re- minions responded. Y'all have been saying this. I've told my friends all about this for years. Everyone yeah. knows I'm ahead of the curve on this. And that's what we try to do. I, I, I appreciate that a lot. <clears throat> I don't think, though, that we bullied them into covering it. I think they're covering it because of two things. Uh, number one, um, yeah, conservative media, people like us, are defending Israel against pro-Hamas protesters who shout, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, people who want the genocide of Jews in the Middle East. And they so, see the electoral <clears throat> vi- vulnerability in well, that? Well, that's part of it. So I think, number one, it's they can finally tell the truth because it's hurting Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. Number one, they can finally tell the truth because it's hurting Joe Biden. Number two, they can't call us anti-Semites. For pointing out George Soros. Interesting. You know? Mm. Because well, if, because if c- you remember, what you're saying is absolutely true. For years, and this happened actually- All the time. In a very high profile way. Any time there was a conservative that said, George Soros is destroying this country. He's funding people who don't enforce the law. The immediate response from the left is, well, that's anti-Semitic. That's right. And like you never understood. It was like underpants gnome type stuff, right? It was yeah. like George Soros and anti-Semitism, except- it, they didn't connect in what it was that we were arguing, but that was the response, and the mainstream media went with it. But now when we're talking about him funding something that is inherently anti-Semitic, yeah. the bumper sticker doesn't stick on the no, bumper. No, no. Right? Mm. I mean, that's your point. That's my point. I also, I, you know, 
I notice uh, uh, that same rule didn't apply to the left when they would attack people like Shelton Adelson. Oh, I know. It's you amazing. Know? That wasn't anti-Semitic, was like, it? Yeah. He, the, he was the bad billionaire. But George Soros was like a good billionaire. Yeah. Because he's a liberal. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? That's, a no, that's such a funny thing is like they'll, you'll see these clowns walk around their shirts that say like, eat the rich. Yeah. And they're like, but also uh, I'm getting paid by George Soros paid. to be here. <laughs> All right. Makes sense, dumbass. Yeah, I mean, it never made any fucking sense. Karl Marx had his whole life paid for by his friend Engels. You know? Bro, left-wing drug money goes deep. I mean, like, like that's the thing. Like, do, do a little bit of research here. If any, com- if you have to talk to one of these dumbass fucking communists, especially on a college campus, point out the fact that Karl Marx was a fail-son loser who had his entire life given to him by people who gave him money. And they're like, wait a minute, that's our business model. He also... <laughs> yeah, like, no, hold on. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I benefited from the entire capitalist system and then turns around and is like, actually, capital wrong (laughs) it's very true loser it's very true uh i just want to quickly mention as we get into our next deal there are two things that great gave me great hope and i don't get a lot of that these days but great hope for our society it stands in stark contrast to like the soros stuff and all the things that are happening in our country when i went to the kentucky derby which you know for those og listeners we started this program basically because we were betting on horses and drinking bourbon during COVID when the city of DC wouldn't let us in it. Yeah. And we had nothing left to do. So we had to get jump on zoom and do it. And we're like, well, shit, let's just record this. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was that or watch people set cars on fire outside of our office. Right. I mean, there's lots of entertainment. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) To go to a Kentucky Derby is to actually admire the way that America used to be. Right. I mean, there are people who are 150,000 plus people cheering on horses that are racing and you're betting on them and you're drinking bourbon and you're having a blast and everyone is dressed to their nines. Everybody wants, they're out there to show, they're they're having fun, Yeah. right? And it's like, oh, you just have a a moment of like, hmm, that feels good. It feels like that, that's nice. And then last night I tuned into, or uh, two nights ago, I tuned into that Tom Brady roast. The shit that was said on that, first of all, I fell off my couch. I was laughing so hard. But the shit that was said on that, the idea that you could have done that any time outside of the 90s, what you're doing right now, it, it blows my mind. I was like, all of these people have like major media contracts major media contracts yeah and the jokes that they're telling have been long since cancelable well i mean i i feel like there's it's started i'd say maybe like a year ago but there's a vibe shift yeah i was just gonna say people are getting sick of that bullshit yeah as the kids would say it's it's a vibe vibe it's like you know what sometimes you just want to hang out with friends have beers and not worry about Oh, bro, that's not cool you didn't use the right pronoun it's like everyone is sick of that shit i think like but the budweiser thing help like draw the line in the sand of like th- like not anymore folks i i, I was I'm watching a, a a documentary about the rise in fast food prices and that, how that's affecting the middle class and the working class in this country you know since joe biden got elected the price of mcdonald's has gone up 30 percent mm. yeah right no, i believe so it. people have bigger fish to fry than this woke bullshit mm. and but they, they also love it. to laugh and they love yeah. to have a good time especially now yeah and like when two venues like that one is a netflix special that has millions of viewers the other is the arguably with the super bowl like one of the biggest american sports in the indy 500 yeah that's right it's memorial day yeah don't you in forget the indy 500, will, greatest spectacle in racing i will not diminish it i will not diminish it smug might but i'm not going to no indy 500 rules okay uh those things are massive american consuming events and like the fact that there's no blowback on any of that stuff tells me People There's a vibe it. shift here. Yeah, we're They're back. We're Saturday, back. Night, Saturday Night Live over the weekend. I don't know if you guys saw this. They had an opening sketch where they were taking shots at the Columbia protesters. I don't, did you see oh, that? Oh, no, I didn't see sketch? it. And then there was a sketch where they were taking shots at JoJo Siwa. Oh, this is the Nickelodeon uh, gal? Yeah, yeah, so so the worm is maybe turning. It's, it's funny because I always tweet that only journalists watch SNL, and I guess I was right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a couple other things to get to. Uh, first of all, Nantucket. Uh, they've now recovered from the uh, sad influx of illegal immigrants at one time last year, courtesy of Ron DeSantis. And, uh, but they have a new thing that's plaguing the island. What's that? They're very concerned. Can we put up graphic number two, Spigats? 
There's a truck. It's the, a Tesla truck. The, the cyber truck is stuck on Nantucket. <laughs> yeah. So this be this truck has terrorized <laughs> terrorized the small New England town. Uh, the EV. Uh, so the, the the story. This comes from the New York Post. Nantucket newspaper trolls local Tesla cyber truck owner for wreaking havoc on Tony Island. Uh, the EV owner parks in crosswalks, gets stuck on the beach. The clunky silver electric personal vehicle, which retails for $101,000, has been creating issues ever since it was first spotted uh, being driven off a steamship. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> on the New steam England. Ship? On the, Wait, like well, the ferry? Got, the ferry. That's how you get the The ferry yeah. has to take the car because there's no bridges yeah. in Nantucket. You got to get the ferry. Anyway, space age looking vehicle. Uh, these things have existed for a while, right? I don't know why we're acting like it's a uh, lunar landing. But anyway, it's an eyesore, according to people there. And uh, it quickly caught the eye of locals, and the newspapers have been sharing images of the vehicle's mishaps ever since it landed. Honestly, I bet they'd be just as offended with an F 150. <laughs> My word. I a truck? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, th the thing is, is that. The owner has done some remarkable things. It's soon after arriving on Nantucket, uh, which has Connecticut plates. It has Connecticut of plates it on this thing. It was uh, seen parked squarely in the crosswalk on Main Street, which, if you're been to Nantucket... Mm. No, that's very uncouth. There is a... I'm not a Nantucket guy. No, there's a America, decorum. But it's nice, you're saying? There's a decorum. Your visits were great? Well, I'm happy you I've been it. there. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, you, you should it's be... It's clear. You know, they, more, more a bicycle riding downtown than a car downtown well i'm glad Regardless, we got we, we, um, i know ashbrook's probably been there too. this is a nantucket show and i'm here with the real america saying you know what what i don't know how the rules are on nantucket because <laughs> i don't go to nantucket i was a bond but, trader <laughs> that, yeah that, he's my, giving us he's fucking active. lessons on this he's like three three guys who could give up in the midwest and all of a sudden he's <laughs> no but that honestly when when he said he had connecticut plates i was like what fun does this guy work on they yeah, check completely <laughs> <laughs> Hours after the large vehicle, uh, first of its kind to make an appearance in the town, uh, it was uh, in a beach full of dunes stuck at the end of the island. According to the people, uh, people the car got pulled out while its driver has not been named. Uh, I don't know about the – so I, I, I think it was Hoobie's Garage that he bought one of these, and he says it's already rusting because it's made of like <laughs> stainless steel. So driving it on the beach probably isn't the best idea if you have this thing. I just love the idea that you roll up in that f truck, and it's just like an old timey town, right? And then you go onto the beach, yeah. And it's and it like got shit. It's like, I can on, only dude. imagine what the thought process is. It's like this one's gonna sting. Yeah. Like, who do you call to get that thing out of there? It just—it really does look like a Mars rover out on the surf, the surface of Mars. It does. You know. It does. Anyway, so if you're in Nantucket, my heart's out. Uh, <laughs> This one was flagged by you, Dunks. Yes. And it's an emotional support alligator. And we've seen a lot of things on this program in terms of animal news. I'd like to pull up graphic three to give you some. There it is. There's a gentleman uh, who's hugging an alligator for our audio only <laughs> listeners. It looks so happy. The alligator's got a big smile on its snout. Is that a snout? What do we call that? Yeah, it seems like a snout. snout. Yeah. It's a snout. It's got the, a snout. And you know what? This is what I'm talking about. This this is the same as all the people who say they have fur babies hugging <laughs> your dog. Like it's just weird, man. Would you shoot that That's, thing? This is the next logical step. Is like once people are bringing their little shit zoos as like emotional support dogs on the plane. Well, what Dude, do you think so, was going to happen? This so, thing took a turn. Though. Yeah, so smug. I I I, I you're, you're pointing out something amazing here, and that is it's gone too far with yep. this alligator, like way, way, way too far. And first of all, shout out to Tara, good friend of the program, who flagged this for okay. me yeah. this morning before our pre-production meeting. But like, this is how far it's gone. Uh, Spaghetti, can we get uh, the next graphic uh, from the GoFundMe? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> This, Look, this is why you gotta watch it on YouTube. You got it. You got to. It's a smiley alligator. I'll be honest. That it looks like a good-natured beast. Well, because he knows there's a dumbass who's gonna let him eat him. So he's this, like, I got 200 pounds for dinner on the way. It's, this alligator dot collar. This alligator. Like, it's not even a color. It's a harness it's a with his name on, on it. Full on harness. Uh, the name of the alligator is Wally. <laughs> full on dog harness. I mean, I put one of these harnesses on. 
are husky because he pulls when we well, take him on walks. Well, it's a dog. Well, it's a working dog. Yeah, it's right. You know, right. He's, he wants to mush. <laughs> um, and and in that in that thing, he's got on full on one of those dog harnesses here, treating it like a family pet. This is what happens when you don't get grandchildren. Like he was like, well, I'm throwing in the towel, getting a fucking gator. <laughs> well, so <laughs> so Wally Wally has gone missing, and Wally Wally apparently has a huge social media presence. Did Wally run away? I don't know. We don't know. But if, but if, that's... if you find him and you're listening, I want a pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the harness on him on the inside. I want the line to say Wally. Chris, oh, <laughs> Christy Christy Gnome. We found you the next. <laughs> yeah. We found you the next pet to murder. <laughs> yeah, is there a gravel pit somewhere near? I mean, this is this is genuinely amazing. So this guy, this gator, he had created a social media presence for it, uh, and it had been followed quite vociferously. And uh, but at some point, the thing left his presence. Yeah, it is now on its own. It's vanished. Nobody can find this gator. It's obviously up to no good. Well, he said uh, here from the article, this is Yahoo, that he suspects someone stole Wally from the fenced outdoor enclosure where Wally spent the night. Mm. Um, this has happened on April 21st. In social media posts, he said uh, pranksters left Wally outside the home of someone who called authorities, resulting in the alligator being trapped and released into the wild. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah. Owned. Yeah. You mean they took... Took Wally. They just took with his harness and all? Well, it's pretty easy once the harness is on. <laughs> oh, you know, all you got to do is pull the leash. So Wally's gone? Yeah. Dude, that is awesome. This guy, it got owned so hard. <laughs> I mean, what did you think, dude? Like, the only <laughs> you brought a gator? You thought it was a pet, and then Pet Control finds it, and they're like, this isn't a pet. Like, use your head, dude. This is a gator. But still, if you're listening and you find this gator, turn him into boots. I'll pay time. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing that the authorities did wrong is not find a gravel pit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, gravel my pit God. in a tannery. That's I where he goes. It. I love it. All right. So listen, folks, don't forget on that VP thing that we were talking about earlier, we really do want your comments. If you can comment on YouTube and where you get your podcast, let us know your thoughts. We're going to incorporate some of that in the show going forward. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. With all of that, it's a big week ahead of us. We got some good guests coming up. We're going to do a lot of stuff here in the next couple of months with some big announcements coming. And I think we did it. I think so. Absolute banger of an episode, gentlemen. Again, thank you so much to the Minions. And like Holmes said, subscribe to the YouTube if you have not yet and leave that comment for your VP pick. So until next time, Minions, keep the faith, hold the line, and own the libs. We'll see you on Thursday. Stay ruthless. <laughs> <laughs>